This is fantastic to be back on board. It's beautiful out here, guys, really. Thank you. <laughs> guys, we are back on the water and we are so excited. We're a bit silly this morning. Giddy with joy. We are so giddy. We're ready for another season of sailing. We just left Charleston. We're heading down to St. Augustine, which is our last stop in Florida before we head over to the Bahamas. Seasick was cured. You're on a beautiful boat. Got Lovely no seasickness this morning. The sea state is beautiful. We do have a good crew. How do you feel? I feel really, really happy. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be out. I feel like my soul has grown by 25%. You look quite wise with this Doyle sails thing. What is this? I feel wise. <laughs> What's next? Well, it's the first sail of the season, so we're just greasing everything up. You get the autopilot sorted? Mm, mostly. We haven't been able to do the sea trial. So we swapped out one unit for another. So, I mean, it's working, so that's good. Um, we're still in the channel. David and I decided that we can, we're just going to hoist the main to get us the last of the way out because there's a bit of current coming against us now. So. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So if you turn around and just make sure you don't go too far. Yo, oh. Keep going. Yep. Do you stack the tapping there for a little bit? No, it just came off. Buenos dias, chicas! And mi amigos. Uh, very excited to be sailing again. Losing my marbles, actually. So we just turned the engines off. I don't know if you can hear me right now because there's no, because there's going to be wind in this. I don't really care. This is f***ing fantastic to be back on board. The boat, I wouldn't say is 100%, but that's fine. I've got excellent crew on board and I don't know, I'm just stoked. I'm just beyond, beyond, beyond burger. Hey Laura, how are you going? I'm going pretty good. Just uh, hanging out with Lenny, making sure that he doesn't fall off the things or crush his fingers in this window. He's pretty interested in what y'all are doing. <laughs> you been a good boy, Lenny? Yeah, I That's a lie, you haven't been a good boy. <laughs> the sea state's quite nice. The sea container ships are a concern, they're everywhere. And this channel is a bit nuts, but once we get out and start heading south, it's going to be really nice. Big guy passed by, and then we ran out of wind for the entire size of that. But it was like, it wasn't much closer than that is there. Yeah, it, I it know. Was, there was like a, an air pocket that it was dragging behind it. That's crazy. It's really weird, huh? Isn't yeah. It? We almost had to turn on the engine. We like ran out of speed completely. <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of speed completely. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the Finally, out of Charleston's crazy shipping lane, we could properly hoist the sails and be on our way. Okay, I'm going to drive, Pant. Okay, let's go. What are you up to? I'm just going to go steer the boat for a bit because I'm feeling a bit queasy, as I usually do when we first leave, and that's a good way to get out of it. So we came out of the channel and then we jived. The wind is behind us, but we're sailing too close. We're going to head into land. Obviously we can jive, but what we're trying to do is just sail 
further and further and further downwind. So we pulled the dagger board up and we're going to put out the code D and both of those things will drag us further downwind. The, the dagger board up will actually make us slide over the top of the water because they act like a keel. Um, obviously if it's down deep in the water you track better and we want to track less better. So it's up and then the code D it heats up what like we go faster which drags the apparent wind around further which means that we can sail deeper downwind. Yeah. The treasure's there? Yeah, the treasure's there. <laughs> treasure? Yeah, treasure. Really? That's Where? Treasure. It's right here. Is it on the three nautical mile line or just out from there? Yeah. Just out? Yeah, that's out. That's out. That's out. That's out. That's out. That's and well, we're about gonna... we're about to sail up to that spot. So, Lenny. should we have a look for the treasure? Yes. What are you going to buy with all the treasure? A treasure. What are you going to buy? Treasure at the sand. It's under the sand. It is under the sand. Yeah. Yeah. It's at the pea and it's under the sand. It's at the door. You might notice this red line here. Riley actually drew it to teach Lenny where he shouldn't jump when he bounces on the tramp because if he bounces too far at the front, he could spring off the front. Bounce, 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 stop. You're not to go past the red line, okay? So you, you stay this side of the red line. <laughs> Yesterday, Riley was teaching him not to go past the red line and it was pretty funny. You think you can do it, Lenny? No. <laughs> I think you can. Walking along, minding your own business. Uh oh, time to stop now. Red line. <laughs> Back away from the red line. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. it. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. But I think it's working so far. Cheers. Yes, if you've noticed the white on my earring, it's because I made a dumb decision and I got another piercing and it's infected, but apparently a crushed up aspirin will fix it. So I'm trialing that out at the moment and you can stop wondering what the heck that is. And if you didn't even notice it before, sorry for pointing it out and wasting your time in explaining it. How's your pasta salad? Amazing. It's so good I think I'll um, have another bowl. Mm. We were well prepared for this trip. We even made food for the first day at sea. <laughs> which when Riley and I are by ourselves, we don't usually have time to do. Laura said that she'd take nine until 12. Dave, we're gonna take 12 We've got, three. Well, yeah, I might make him do that, the dog yeah. shift. The dog shift, yeah. Maybe I won't, maybe I'll be a, a good captain. I'm talking here, of course, about the dreaded night shift. We normally break it up into three hour shifts, six to nine, nine to 12, 12 to three. This is easier to deal with on a longer crossing of maybe four or five days or more as you can get into a bit of a rhythm. The first night is always the hardest and this is what we're talking about here. It's really good if someone is tired during the day and it's actually able to get to sleep. I'll then ask that person to stay up as late as they can. Often this is actually me and I'm able to last until maybe 2 a.m. before I'll wake up the next person, which is when the three hour shifts begin. Often, like with Andre or other people that have come on board, it's more like whoever's going strong. Yeah, whoever's the least tired. Yeah. Someone just says, I'll take the 12 to Yeah. Yeah. You got Lenny to sleep? Yeah, we took a yeah. little nap together. Thank you. Was he sooky or he was fine? He was good. Awesome. Um, mini balls then you can have that's second sad, and third. That's a sad party. <laughs> <laughs> I do this at home, they call me bits. Really? <laughs> You're like, why do you eat everything in bed?
Literally everyone on the boat right now, apart from me, is sleeping. <laughs> Which is really good, because I'm gonna get to sleep tonight, whereas these guys have to do shift work. And yeah, the wind's quite light. Still got the code D up. Still zigzagging, still driving. Won't have to drive for a little while now. My boys are away. Hello. Can you guys say hi to everyone? Are you going to say hi to everyone? Say hello. Oi. 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 We try to keep the iPad as more of a tool. It's like when we really need it, use it because it's super effective. He gets addicted to it. I'll try and put him on educational shows. He's watching Octonauts. It's like a water-based kind of educational show for kids his age. It's got some annoying songs in it, but it's pretty good. Dashy reporting. Pangolins. The pangolin has a reptilian hide. The only mammal with a scaly outside. These conditions are just perfect. Could not be happier with our first sale of the season. Thank you, <laughs> Poseidon. So before I went down for a nap, we tried a few different sale configurations. We've currently just got the code D up because we're going dead downwind. So it's just a matter of either going dead downwind or cracking off slightly or a little bit more, at which point you can put the main sail up. Um, but yeah, I, I had a try with a few different things and this is giving us our best VMG, which is velocity made good uh, towards our destination. Dead downwind is actually the most comfortable as well because you're going with the waves. So your wind and the waves are both coming from directly behind us. We're just getting gently pushed to our destination. It's beautiful out here, guys, really. This is nuts, Elena's not seasick, flat water, beautiful clouds, sun setting, sun, sun setting over there in the east I believe that would be and life is pretty peachy. Life has been pretty peachy. We wonder how the next six months in the Bahamas will go for us. If it's anything like the past couple of days we'll be very happy. We're planning to go to some uninhabited islands with some other YouTubers you would have seen before so get ready for that one. Do you have a coffee? No, I have a um, water. I was jealous. We wanted to talk to you guys about something because you loved the last talk we did. What's the most important thing that you learn on a sailboat, Elena? How little you need. We spoke about this before. <laughs> how little you need. It's funny because the last episode we were compl I was complaining about how minimalist you are. <laughs> and this one I'm like, you realise how little you need. <laughs> but, but you do. Yeah, true. And, and, and you really, this sounds really lame but you find yourself because sometimes you only have yourself to rely on. It's only you that's awake that can quickly turn into the wind when the squall comes to take that reef. You have a very direct impact on your safety. Yeah. And if you die, it's probably your fault. Yeah, There's, you Which can't like- Which is empowering or not? Well, it's like you gotta get shit done because if you don't, then you can't go crying at a dad or a brother or you know, you got no one to kind of look after you. <laughs> it's only you. When I was sailing around with uh, Jimmy and Sam before I met Elena, uh, a guy was looking after my boat and he told me that the cool thing that he learnt about sailing was, I've forgotten his name, but he was such a legend and he looked after my boat for a while when I went back to, and worked offshore. Okay. He goes, you really learn what's important. So when you're even five miles offshore, you forget about all of the bullshit that you, that I am fully caught up with when I'm on land, like politics, um, sport, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things that just melt into the background. And, and especially when you're out of range and you're like, okay, what's, what am I thinking about now? Well, you're not, you're not thinking about what you're thinking. Um, that would be very meta. You're, you're just, now left with the things that are really important like how much water have we got left over let's make sure no one falls overboard yeah let's keep the people in the boat and the water out are you feeling tired are you tired are you tired go to sleep now try and get some sleep now yeah let's all get along famously because it's a high stress situation especially if we haven't had sleep so let's keep on top of that yeah do we have food 
do we have water? It's the distillation of... No, I'm going to try and riff on some big words there. <laughs> when I no. first met Riley, he was like, you were reading a dictionary, hey? You told me... No. It's pretty funny. When I first met Riley, he was wasn't like... wasn't reading a dictionary. No, but you made me I'd read, read like... <laughs> He made me read a thesaurus or something, didn't you? No. Not made. I'm, it sounds like he was forcing me to read this. He was like, oh, you should like try and learn some bigger words. <laughs> well, you wrote a big list of words, remember? And I read it. He had a big list of words in notepad. And he was like, you should read through all these words. And I was like, whoa, cool. Like, I didn't know that meant that. You, you wrote them down. And For you, you. You'd got them di from a dictionary or something. No, no. I've, I, all of my favourite words that my authors had used. When I first met Riley, this is getting a little off Like topic sedulous here. and circumspect. I was like this country girl. And bilinear. Tw I just turned 21 years old. My friends and I pretty much spoke our own language back home. A lot of made up words. Just slang. Just country Australian slang. And so when I met Riley, he was like, you should read no. my list of words. No, you loved me. I know you loved me, but it was one really funny thing that you, I could tell you were like, you really need to work on your English. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really funny that I'm writing a book now because like English was not my thing. Um, the book is, the English is superb. You've anyway, been working on it for like three years. It's nearly finished. Anyway, do you keep talking? So yeah, they're the important things on a sailboat. <laughs> And make Water sure you learn good English. And big words. Also really important out at sea. Thanks for watching, kids.